Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the re-release of the AMT Fruhoff flatbed trailer in 125 scale. It's AMT model kit number 617 in the current catalog, released in 2009. AMT's been making these for quite a while in different releases, and it's still as popular today as it was when it was first released. It's a skill level 2 kit for moderate builders and contains 110 parts molded in white styrene with vinyl tires. You get some vinyl hose and a chain for the load and the lines also and there's a highly accurate undercarriage featuring cross members with angle braced landing gear and a tandem axle configuration. It's a true semi trailer. The decals are quite detailed and the rig decals are uh, included with bonus items that you'll use on other builds. Finished dimensions are approximately 18 and a half inches long, 4 inches wide, and 2 and a half inches high. Plan on some extra shelf space when you pair this with a tractor because it'll be over 2 feet in length. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But, as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue, but other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. I decided to make a custom plate for my rig, so I printed out my logo on a piece of white paper with a color printer, and I put a little piece of clear tape over it and then cut it out for the license plates, which you'll see later on in the build. Construction begins with the rims and tires. Paint the rims the color of your trailer. I chose a titanium steel color, and then glue a ring on the front and back of each rim, and add a drum into the back of each rim, then using some 220 grit paper, press and roll the tread to give them a worn look, and then press a tire over each side of the rim to make four sets of duels. Gather the suspension parts and we'll put those together in two steps. First install uh, the center and cross members into the inner suspension, and then add the rear cross member, add the outer suspension, assemble the three air brake tanks and the air valves and install those. In the second step, assemble the axles and install those. Add the radius rods, assemble all four air chambers and the push rods and install those. Here's what your assembly will look like and you can paint the unit the color of your trailer. Now we'll start the frame in the main bed and note on the bottom of the frame there is a copyright script and the part number that needs to be removed. You can use a little um, lacquer thinner and, or maybe some light sandpaper and it'll come right off. Grab the main bed and the frame rails and add the three center crossbars and six outer support bars. Install the rear cap and the three bumper parts and clean up any flash around the edges. Now using your choice of color, paint the entire unit I use that titanium color and also note that there's a number of ejector pin marks to fill and finish on the underside if you're considering this for a contest build. On the upper surface there's wooden flats on the in-between sections as you see here so I taped off the rest of the frame uh, so that I could just paint the uh, wood surfaces with a wood tone coloration. First I painted the wood section with a flat tan base. Then I used different shades of brown washes and some blends to create a dirty wood floor look for the trailer bed. It's not an exact science because each trailer would have its own look depending on age, care, and use, but you can use your discretion, do some research online, or take a look at trucks at a local truck stop to get some ideas of how they should look. Pull out these parts and paint the lock bar steel and install that in place to hold the suspension there in one of the sets of holes. Then paint the mud flaps flat black. 
Install the suspension to the frame and add the tires now too. I added the Fruhoff decals to the flaps and install the flaps to the rear of the suspension. Cut some of the rubber hose and attach it to the two pins on the floor and onto the pins on the suspension. The king pin can be attached to the coupler plate and painted with the bulkhead and front cap. They're trailer color too. And there are two marker lights that should be painted turn signal yellow on the front cap and the airline connections are aluminum. Install the coupler plate to the underside and the front cap is installed and the bulkhead added to that. One of the build's main options is to choose between skid feet and wheels for the landing gear. Also if you decide you're going to have the trailer on a rig or as a standalone display posing the legs up or down. Uh, I'm going to use this with a rig so I want the wheels and I will use the wheels up choice. So paint your choice uh, trailer color and then uh, include the crank and the handle and assemble the landing gear of your choice. Then install the legs into place and add the support bar in the middle. Use plenty of warm water and apply the DOT stripes to the side of your trailer here just below the top surface. Grab the rub rails and clean any flash and then paint it trailer cover and then add that to the side of the trailer. Now we can finish the back end by um, gluing the license plates into plates and then the tail lights are painted flat black on the surrounds uh, for the trim and red for the lenses. Gather the items for the load for your trailer. This is an optional construction but I think it adds to the authenticity. Um, so assemble the ends to the steel rolls and then paint the rolls aluminum or chrome and the chocks are painted wood tone. Then use the length of chain and cut shorter lengths to give six tie downs. Put those into place. Line up the rolls and glue the chocks to the bed. Then run two lengths of chain through each roll and attach to each side of the rub rail to create a tied down load. I didn't have many parts remaining here, just some unused decals and the landing gear choices that I didn't make. And that's about all you'll have left over. This kit was an easy build. Nothing was difficult and could easily be assembled in a weekend. Um, it had a few small issues. The tires and rims didn't fit real well, but a little bit of sanding and trimming took care of that. And once you do, they're okay too. There's not much detail and building is simplistic. Uh, remember, this is also a 70's kit, so the molds are in pretty good shape, but you'll still have some flash to clean up. Now the fit and finish was good. The frame was straight and had no real issues beyond some flash. All the parts went in straight and fit as intended. The bed's a solid part and fairly thick, and mine had no warpage and was flat. Overall, the construction went very smoothly. You, if you had some experience, you could build this thing in one day, I think. But I would consider it, uh, you know, for the intermediate builder. And overall, I enjoyed the kit uh, because when it's finished, it looks great and makes a great addition to your big rig model shelf. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you can find us on Facebook and also at our website, www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks!